In today's video, we're going to create a fully responsive nav bar that when it becomes too small, we'll show a hamburger menu that'll drop down our options and expand and collapse as needed. Let's get started now. To get started, I have an HTML file with the boilerplate HTML code to import our different style sheets we're going to create, as well as our JavaScript file that we're going to create. And inside of the body, we just need to put our HTML for the nav bar. So we're just going to use a nav element with the class of navbar so that we can use this as our navbar and we can reference it in our CSS. And then inside of here, we need to create sections for both our brand title as well as all of the buttons that we're going to have. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a div, give it the title or the class of brand title. And in here, we'll just put brand name because this is going to be the name section of our brand. And as you can see, that pops up in the top left. And then we need a second section, which is going to contain our navbar links. So we're just going to create another div for that. Give it a class here of navbar links. And then inside of here, we're going to put our different links and we'll put them inside of an unordered list just because they're a list item. And each one of these will be a list item with an anchor tag inside of them. And inside of this anchor tag, we have home as our first one. And we'll just give it here an href of just a hashtag since it's not actually going anywhere. I'm then going to copy this down twice more so that we have three links in total. And this one is going to be in our about link. And then finally, we'll have a contact link. And now as you save that, you see that we have all of the different information on our page that we need, and we can actually start styling our site for the desktop version first. So let's open up our styles.css here, and let's do a little bit of boilerplate CSS that we need to make our project easier. The first thing we're going to use is set up box sizing. We're just going to use border box, and this will make styling our widths much easier. And then we're going to take our body and we're going to remove all margin and padding from the body. So that way we can butt everything up right next to the border of our screen, just like this. Now we can start actually styling our nav bar element. The first thing that we want to do is use Flexbox to display these objects because we're going to want them to line up side by side. We then can justify the content with space between, and this will push them as far apart from each other as possible. And then lastly, we want to align our items in the center so that our links, since they're going to be smaller, will line up perfectly in the center of our brand name, which is going to be larger. Lastly, since this is going to be our nav bar at the top, we want to give it a background color that's going to be darker. So we'll just give it a really dark gray color. We want to make all the text inside of it white by default. So now if you save that, we see that we have a brand name over here on the left, which is centered. And on the right, we have our links, which are centered as well. So now we can move on to actually styling our brand title first, because that'll be the easiest of the two to style. All we need to do is increase the font size a bit since we want our brand name to stick out as opposed to our links. So we'll make it 1.5 times our root font size, and we'll add a little bit of margin on it so that it doesn't quite line up at the very end of our screen. We'll just do 0.5 here, for example. And now if we save that, you see that we got a larger brand name, which is going to be centered and pushed away from the edges of our screen. Now let's move on to actually styling our navbar links. In order to style our navbar links, we just need to use that navbar links class that we created earlier. And we want to select the UL, which is going to be that unordered list. And we want to just remove all of the normal styling to it. So we're going to remove the margin and we're going to remove the padding on it. And then we're also going to make it a display of flex so that we can easily align the items inside of our list side by side as we need to and space them out properly. Next, what we want to do is we want to select the actual LIs inside of here. So we can select our navbar links again. We want to get all of the list items. And we just want to remove the list style from them because we don't want that underline to be appearing or have any of the dots on it. So we can remove that list style. And then we can select the actual A tags, the anchor tags inside of our navbar links here. We could just do this by selecting the LI and all the anchor tags inside of it. And here is where we can actually remove the different underline by just saying text decoration none. We want to set the color to be white by default. And we also want to just give it a little bit of padding around each one. We'll just say one REM and we'll just make them display block so that they show up as a larger size. And there we go. We now have our links on the right hand side here and we have our brand name on the left side here, pretty well spaced out from each other. And these links, when we click on them, as you can see, it adds that hashtag to our URL, which is perfect. Now what we need to do is actually style these so that they have animation on hover so that we can tell that we're actually hovering over them. So to do that, we're going to want to just select our nav bar links here, get our LI. And when we hover over this LI, all we want to do is just change the background color. So we got our background color and we'll just make this another of those gray colors. If I can actually type. And now when we hover, you'll see that we get that light gray background 
behind our different anchor tags when we hover over them. And we have a non-responsive navbar complete. But as you can see, as we shrink this, it doesn't actually make our hamburger menu in the left-hand corner. So let's actually go about implementing that now. The first thing that we need to do is actually add that hamburger menu inside of our HTML. We can just put it right here in between our two current divs, and we can just make this one an anchor tag. We're just gonna give it another href that is going to lead to nowhere. We're gonna give it a class here, a toggle button, so that way we know that this is our button that we're using to toggle. And inside of here, we just wanna put three different spans that are going to represent the three lines of our hamburger menu. So we're going to have a span, give it a class here of bar, and we're just going to copy this three times. We don't want anything in this span since we don't actually want any text. And that's all we need to do with our HTML. Now we can go back into our styles and we can work on styling that toggle button. So let's first select our toggle button and actually style how we want this to look. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to position this absolutely so that we can force it to be all the way on the right side of our screen without messing with the flow of the rest of our elements. We also want to make it so it's positioned not quite at the very top of our screen, so we'll push it 0.75 REM from the top of our screen, and we're going to do the same thing, but one REM from the right side of our screen. We want to make sure that this does not display by default because we don't want this to show up on our larger screens, only our smaller screens. And inside of here, we're going to change our flex direction to be column so that all of our different spans line up on top of each other from one at the very top and the third one at the very bottom. And we're going to justify so our content with some space between them again so that we have as much space as possible in between these different elements inside of our toggle button. And lastly, we just want to set a width and a height. We'll just do 31 pixels as the width, and we'll set the height here to be 21 pixels. So now if we change this display none to display effects, you'll notice that it doesn't actually do anything, and that's because our toggle buttons don't actually have any bars inside of them that are styled. So let's select the bars inside of our toggle button. So we'll just select that bar class here. And all we need to do is just add a little bit of styling here to make these actually show up. So we'll make them three pixels tall. We're gonna make them take up 100% of the width inside of the container of our toggle button. We wanna give them a background color here of white so that they show up. Whoops, white. And then lastly, just a little bit of a border radius around these. So that way we can see a little bit of a rounding of the corners. We'll just say 10 pixels, for example like this border radius. And now if you say that, we see we have our hamburger menu up here in the top right hand corner, which is perfect. And it looks exactly as we want it to, but we don't actually want this to display on our larger screens. So we'll change this display flex back to display none. And there we go, we have our normal menu. And now when we shrink this menu down, we wanna actually change this to be our hamburger menu. So down here, we're gonna use what's called a media query, which allows us to say, when a certain condition is met, run the code inside of here. But if it's not met, then don't. So in our case, if the max width of our screen is 400 pixels or less, so if our screen is less than 400 pixels wide, we know that we want to run the code inside of this media query. And your media query may be a different value here. I have my browser zoomed in to 150%, so it's easier for you to see. So you may need to use a larger number such as 600 as opposed to 400. So now inside of here, what we can do is we can take our toggle button and we just wanna change the display of this to flex so that it'll actually show up. And then we want to make our navbar links here. We want to make them disappear. So we'll select our navbar links. We'll set the display to none. And now if you save that, you see we get our hamburger menu on the right hand side. But if we increase our screen, you see that we get our normal icons, which is exactly what we want. And as we decrease, we get a hamburger and it'll go back and forth as soon as we hit that 400 pixel breakpoint. Now let's, instead of making this display none, let's just comment this out for now so that we can actually see our different icons in here. And we wanna style our icons, our links over here to be below our brand name so that when we click this menu, it'll slide in and slide out as we want it to. So the order to do that, all we need to do is take our nav bar here and we just need to change the flex direction to column. And now, as you can see, everything is going to be positioned above each other and below each other as we want. And in order to make our brand name appear back on the left side, we just want to align our items in here and we want to align them at the flex start. And now if you say that, you see we get our brand name all the way on the left and we have our items here, which are going to be stacked right below it. But currently they're being stacked left to right and we want to stack them top to bottom. And that'll be an easy fix for us. What we need to do is we need to select our navbar links class again. And we want to select the actual UL inside of it. And this UL, as we remember earlier, we made it display a flex. 
So we can just change the flex direction here to column. And if we save that, you see they're now stacked above each other as we want them to, but we want them to be dead center over here instead of on the left. So in order to do that, we're just going to set the width here to 100% and that'll give us our UL spanning 100%. And we just need to make our actual container also span 100%. So our navbar links, all we need to do here is make our width 100%. And now you can see that our actual items are spanning 100% of the width and we just want to make them aligned in the center. So we're just going to go down here, select our navbar links again, and we're going to want to select the actual LIs inside of them. And we just want to say text align center. So now our text is going to be dead center, just like this. All I think that really needs to be left is we need to remove some of the padding that's around these elements because they're a little bit too far spaced out in my opinion. So let's go down here. We're going to select our navbar links again. And we're going to select the actual anchor tags this time. And we're just going to change our padding on these anchor tags to be 0.5 REM and 1 REM. And if I spell that correctly, you see that we now have our elements being closer spaced out together as opposed to being farther spaced out as we want on the larger desktop view. And lastly, we're going to use an active class in order to determine if this should be shown or not. So we're just going to have navbar links here dot active. So when it is active, we want our display to be flex. And now we can go back and completely uncomment this display none. So as you can see by default, our menu is not being displayed. But when we click this, we want our menu to come down. And if we click it again, we want our menu to go up. And that's where we're going to have to start using JavaScript in order to implement that. Luckily, the JavaScript for this is going to be fairly straightforward. So let me just walk you through it real quick. The first thing we want to do is actually get that toggle button element that we have inside of our code. So we can just say document.get element by class name, and we can just pass in the class name here, which as we know is called toggle button. And since this returns an array, we just want to get the first element in that array, which is going to be the toggle button right here on our page. Next, we want to get the nav bar links that we have. So we can do essentially the same thing, document.get element by class name. And instead of using toggle button, we'll just use nav bar links and again, there's only one of those, so we just want to get the very first one on our page here. And now we have our toggle button and our links that we can access in the rest of our code. So we can just take our toggle button here and we can just add a event listener. So we can say whenever this element is clicked, we just want to run a certain function, which we're going to define it here. And inside of this function, all we want to do is take our navbar links. We want to access all of the different classes on it, and we just want to toggle the active class. Essentially, all this means is if the active class does not exist, it'll add it. And if the active class does exist, it will remove it. And now if we save that, if we click on our button over here, you can see that our menu pops open. And if we click it again, you see that it disappears. And that's exactly perfect. That's what we want. And as we expand our screen, you can see it turns back into a normal menu. And these links work just as before, look exactly the same. And as we shrink it, we get the hamburger menu, which will open up, pop down, and close as we click on it. And that's all it takes to create an incredibly simple nav bar that is completely responsive for mobile and desktop views. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other CSS tutorials, which are going to be linked over here, and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a good day.